Good morning, folks. We begin with the incoming solar tornadoes. They are not there anymore. Last night, they lifted and ripped away from the corona. The CME is tight and moving at a pretty good clip, but none of it is Earth-directed at all. A few hours after that eruption, a smaller pop triggered a north-moving solar tsunami away from the active region just ahead of where the filament released. Analyzing that sunspot and others will be tough with NASA's SDO webpage out of service right now, but we can use the old black and white magnetogram to determine that there must be magnetic mixing in the middle where black and white are interacting. However, the larger sunspot group to the north is another story. This one covers a wide, wide area but has little to no magnetic mixing. You can see that black and white are well separated, only butting up against the gray, but for a tiny spot in the lead group. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we find a one-day uptick in flaring, and that's about it. We're back down this morning. Middle of yesterday, we watched a dense, speedy, and hot plasma wave weekly stream past Earth. It was almost certainly that faint CME we were expecting, and its effects were minor. KP maxed out at 4. The story of the day, week, month, maybe the story of my tenure on YouTube is that the Milky Way galaxy has just woken up. As has been predicted by many from the stingiest academics to the worst fearmongers, the G2 approach to our galactic center has begun to produce galactic flares. There could be CME-like effects in what some have called superwave surges, and I might add that galactic energetic particle events should be considered in the mix too. You see, ever since we've begun watching it, it appears the galactic center flares once every 10 days, but since the close approach of our galaxy's version of Comet NEAT, this year, the center has begun flaring almost every single day. Of course, there is the time delay, so these things happened a long time ago, but the observable evidence comes right before the actual felt effects, and that's all the time when it comes to space weather. So a discussion must come soon about what these flares could mean for our solar system and our Earth. Other top stories today include Rosetta's water cycle on the comet, zoomed in on the neck and analyzing water and temperature, etc., Excellent graphics and explanations. There is a lot of water up there. Also got a link to NASA's latest phytoplankton story. A serious decline in the northern hemisphere has taken place. Read all about it at the link below. Top tropical event right now is actually going to swing eastward towards China soon. Hawaii is still waiting for something to happen to its southeast. Still got central U.S. energy flow to the north and that low at the east coast near Florida. The same northern convergence has my eye in northern Europe, but also don't sleep on that Mediterranean low between Italy and Greece. Down under the top watch is the convergence line approaching Perth from the western waters of the Indian Ocean. And October 17th and 18th, not far away. My four talks are just the tip of the iceberg at observing the frontier in Pittsburgh. Click the link below to reserve your spot. The venue hotel is officially sold out, but many others are nearby. We'd love to see you. Got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.10 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.